Today's spotlight is on brushes and how to use them. Are you intimidated by an expensive brush or think you're not worth it? You should come try one. It will make all the difference. I hear customers complain all the time that they can't draw a straight line, therefore they must not be an artist. And I'm like, you're trying to paint a straight line with a teeny tiny brush that doesn't hold paint? It's not your fault, it's the brush. Let me show you what you should be looking for. Hi, so if you come in looking for a brush that will do fine flowing lines, people often choose a little synthetic brush because they think it's a nice fine point, that's what it looks like on the shelf. And when I tell them, oh no, no, you want to do fine long lines, you want these brushes, and they laugh at me because they just see these puffed out hairs and they think it's not going to perform. Well, let me show you some secrets here. So luckily, a synthetic has come a long way, so we can get a synthetic brush that will hold a bit of water and come to a fine point. That's not bad, but you can see it's still just plastic and water falls off plastic onto the more absorbent surface very quickly. The paper I'm testing right now is vanishing image paper. It will show marks when the brush is wet and it'll evaporate away, so it makes my demonstration really easy. So here's the little brush, just a synthetic brush, didn't do much. So what happens is you go and you lift the paint, you do your line, you go back, you try to match up your line again and it doesn't quite line up. So you end up with a broken line that looks a little bit finicky, not long and flowing like you were hoping for. If you're on a limited budget, you can uh, stay in the synthetic family and choose a brush that's a little bit longer. This is called a liner. So you have a lot more hair to feed that teeny tiny tip. That will help your lines go further. I use my baby finger on the surface to help control the tip. So you can see I can get some nice flowing lines, but again, I'm pretty much done. Not bad for a synthetic hair. Let's look at these ones here. These are Kalinsky Sable, the finest hair if you're doing uh, watercolors, uh, gouache, or pen and ink. Kalinsky hair, like you see on those um, shampoo commercials that show you all the little scales of our hair that we try to condition away. Well, in a natural hair brush, you want those scales. You want the space and you want that body of hair to hold the water. That's what does the magic for you. So let's dip it in the water. Let's get rid of all those air bubbles because that's how much paint this brush will hold. And we just give it a flick and it's going to come to a point all by itself. So here we have a brush that will go and flow and flow and flow and flow and flow and flow and flow. You can get pretty good detail with it even though it's a bigger brush because Kalinsky Sable comes to a nice point. Uh, the liner shape is also ideal. Now this is a size 6. Let me show you a tiny same brush. It is nice for assigning your name. It is nice for flicking, flicking up nice little brush strokes for tree branches or long grasses. Very nice flowing brush. Script. Kalinsky. Can't beat it. How about a longer hair brush? This one is nice. This is the 1203K Da Vinci Maestro, which means it's the best of the Kalinsky hair. You have to put it in water to believe how nicely this points. So the longer the hair, the longer the lines. This is why it's called a liner. It will do lines like no other. So if you've been to art school, you know they talk about having expressive lines where you can go very fine to very heavy and back again. This brush gives you that sophisticated line that makes your work look really effortless rather than overworked or too much bitty detail. This is just a nice flowing brush. The other thing about this is when you've got the brush loaded with your favorite color, say your expensive cobalt blue, you don't have to dip it back in the water and waste your paint in order to finish the whole painting. It will do it all for you. Isn't that just beautiful? Klinsky Sable Long Liner. You can invest in these better quality brushes if you have a good brush soap. Don't skimp on your brush soap. It's important to not only wash the pigment off your brush, all the mediums and the binders off your brush, but you also want to um, give it a bit of conditioner, give it a bit of life back into your brush to help preserve it and make it last a long time. Brush hair technology has come a long way. Look at this crazy brush. Here we have a um, ox hair tip mixed with a uh, squirrel hair tip. So you've got the water loving squirrel hair feeding the more durable, blunt-tipped rigor point. There you go, look at this brush when it's wet. 
Rigger brushes are different than a script or a liner. They have been blunt formed at the tip. This is so that you can um, have a line that's outlining and it's all one thickness. It doesn't vary depending on how much weight you have on it. So if you're an illustrator or a cartoonist or a sign painter, you're doing letters that you want a nice even line that doesn't vary thick and thin, this brush will do it for you. So that one wore out. So now imagine if we had something that held more water. So the water-loving squirrel in this brush will feed the same tip as I just showed you. This is also a Da Vinci brush. It's a series 20 and it's quite amazing. So now we'll just dip this in the water and um, I'll be able to do uh, lines till the, the cows come home, I guess. Turn, turn, turn. So I hope that helps you with your uh, outlines in your watercolors, your inks and your gouache. You could use these also for a little bit of the thinner, more fluid acrylics. Definitely want to take more time and care in washing them out. Uh, when you have your brushes dry, let them dry flat or upside down in a brush hanger. That way water is falling off the surface. Gravity is helping you maintain the tip of these brushes. Um, the worst thing you can do to a fine tip brush is to store it upright in that container the way we all do. What's going to happen is the water is going to fall into the ferrule. Any little bit of paint or pigment or binder that's left behind is going to start building up in the ferrule and eventually your fine tip brush is going to splay out, get glued open like that and it's not going to perform well for you next time. So wash your brush really well in a good brush soap, lay it flat to dry or hang it upside down to dry. This Da Vinci brush box is ideal. Um, you can store your brushes into it. It has this nice um, foam and you can close it up. The foam holds your brushes in position. You can lock it up. The air holes allow your brush to, to breathe. And now you can shake it and your brushes don't roll around because the foam is holding it. So lots of little tips for saving your good quality brushes. The vanishing image paper is always available and you can test the brushes and know for yourself what works for you.